President of the United States, I was present at the first Pan American Congress in Washington, D.C. Hello, that was God's help. Our two countries shall continue to live side by side in peace and prosperity. Benjamin Harrison. My fellow citizens, recent events have imposed upon the patriotic people of this country a responsibility and a duty greater than that of any since the Civil War. Then it was a struggle to preserve the government of the United States. Now it is a struggle to preserve the financial honor of the government. Our free embraces an honest dollar, an unpunished national credit, adequate revenues for the uses of the government, protection to labor and industry, preservation of the whole market, and reciprocity which will extend our foreign market. Upon this platform we stand and submit its declaration to the sober and considerate judgment of the American people. The big bosses of the political field, the beneficiaries of privilege in the field of industry, the men who represent that sinister alliance between crooked politics and crooked business, which has done more than anything else for the corruption of American life, are united as one man against the genuine rule of the people themselves. The privileged classes, the representatives of special privilege, of special interests, can always make terms with a boss or bosses. They can make terms with the bosses who dominate the Republican Party. They can make terms with the bosses who dominate the Democratic Party. But they can't make terms with the people. They can't make terms with the men who honestly and genuinely represent the popular will. I am willing to admit that war has accomplished much in the progress of the world. I am willing to admit that there are certain crises in the forward march of Christian civilization that perhaps could not have been met in any other way than by the sword. I am willing to admit that war develops certain heroic traits in men and furnishes a test for the evidence of the highest character. Perhaps, too, it trains and disciplines people. But the other side of the picture justifies the prayer of every man, of every civilized man, that war should be abolished, and that the suffering, cruelty, corruption, and demoralization that follow in its train should be, as far as we can bring it about, lifted as a burden from the human race. It is our duty to take every legitimate and proper step we can to persuade the nations of the world to settle their controversies in some other way. There never was a time when impatience and suspicion were more keenly aroused by private power selfishly employed. When jealousy of everything concealed or touched with any purpose not linked with the general good or inconsistent with it, more sharply or immediately displayed itself. Nor was the country ever more susceptible to unselfish appeal or to the high arguments of sincere justice. These are the unmistakable symptoms of an awakening. My countrymen, the first flaming torch of Americanism was lighted in framing the federal constitution in 1787. 
The pilgrims signed their simple and suggested covenant a full century and a half before and set aflame their beacon of liberty on the coast of Massachusetts. Other pioneers of New World freedom were rearing their new standards of liberty from Jamestown to Plymouth for five generations before Lexington and Concord heralded the new era. It was all American in the best and results, yet all of it lacked the soul of nationality. In simple truth, there was no thought of nationality in the revolution for American independence. The colonists were resisting a wrong, and freedom was their solace. Once it was achieved, nationality was the only agency suited to its preservation. <laughs>